so does this bring back any memories for y'all clarence nyc yeah he originated this but we continuing this all right Clarence can't be the only one to tell stories from the bathtub, okay? This was a while ago. I'm bringing it back, both Gizmo and me. I was arrested for a DUI, but I didn't tell you the story yet. But uh, before I get into it, just because I was arrested, charged, convicted, and sentenced for a DUI does not mean that I can't drink. Because listen, I am over the age of 21. 38 to be exact and uh I'm a drink fuckers I just ain't gonna drive <laughs> that's all we we comfortable up in this bitch all right mm. got my little 40 you know corona familiar la cerveza mas fina I haven't spoke Spanish in years oh my god so this all took place in Prescott Arizona I was there for work. My assignment was only for three months. I haven't partied hard since my 20s. In my 30s, I was married with stepchildren and I just got more responsible and made better decisions in life. Uh, but once I started traveling, I still didn't go out to bars and clubs like that. Once a month, maybe? This time in Prescott, Arizona, there's a strip called Whiskey Road. My dumb ass was getting carried away with the partying. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was partying every weekend by myself going to the bars okay I had a good time that's where I spent my New Year's in downtown Prescott and I fucking enjoyed myself I'm almost done with my assignment I already signed up for an assignment in California so I only have about three weeks left in Arizona the two times I went out before this incident I had a strong intuition that something bad was gonna happen and you know what they always say follow your intuition if you feel like something bad's gonna happen don't go through with it Listen, I know that, but when you do have that intuition and people actually follow it and something bad doesn't happen, it's like, was something bad actually gonna happen or no? Because you don't know because you never went. So my dumbass thought, you know what, I'm gonna still party. By the way, where I was staying at was an Airbnb. I usually find my own housing because I choose to rent rooms. That way I can pocket most of the housing money. Well, this coworker of mine, who's also a traveler, she's been staying at hotels during the week. And on the weekends, she usually goes home to visit her family. So she saves money by not staying at a hotel on the weekends. But she decided to get an Airbnb for like a week or two. And all of a sudden, I'm at work, she has the day off, and she sends me a picture of Gizmo. Bitch, how'd you meet my dog? I never brought you to him. Turns out, she rented out a room in the same house I'm staying at. So, that's how we ended up living together. Now, I have two weeks left, and her and I had never gone out together. So we're like, fuck it, let's go out. When I typically drink on a night out, beer is my go-to. I don't mix my shit because first off, liquor is too hard for me. I'm small. I am 5'4", 105 to 110 pounds. I don't need much to get me intoxicated. Beer does the trick. But once I start taking shots, it fucks me up. So I try not to. Or at least I try to stick to just one shot. And now what she drinks, she drinks that dark liquor, okay? She's taller than me. She weighs more than me. So she can handle that shit and she's used to it. Her choice of drink is Duce. We pregame at the house. I had a couple beers, thinking that's all I was gonna drink, but this girl brought out her Duce, and sure enough, that bottle, we started sipping on it. Because conversation was flowing, I'm not paying attention to how many sips I'm drinking, but I'm sipping. I decided to drive my car downtown, which is only 10 minutes away. Mind you, I'm used to drinking and driving. I've been doing it for, for the past 15 years in Illinois. Never got caught, ever. So I'm used to it, it's kind of like second nature. And I, I know a lot of y'all motherfuckers do it too. And when I say drinking and driving, I mean if you guys only drink one beer or one glass of wine, y'all motherfuckers are still drinking and driving. So I know y'all do it too, stop playing with me. I'm driving my, my Jeep. We go 10 minutes downtown to Whiskey Row. Whiskey Row is in downtown Prescott. It's literally a whole street a row 
full of bars. That's where everybody parties. So I park, we're in the vehicle, we're waiting on my co-worker's other co-worker. I know, confusing, let me explain. She worked full time at the same hospital I worked at, but from time to time, our boss would ask her to work a day or two at the sister hospital. And that's how she met her other co-worker there. I never met her, but we're waiting in the car for her. So while we're waiting in the car, we still sipping on that douce. The girl comes, she meets us there, she gets in the vehicle, and we're all drinking in the car. And then all of a sudden, the bottle's fucking empty. I was surprised to find out that we drank the whole douce. And I don't understand because I don't feel fucked up. And I, and I should feel fucked up. Girl. Well, I was gonna feel that shit later, let me tell you. Listen, I gotta drink while we talk about this. So now that we're done with the bottle, we go ahead and get out of the vehicle. We go inside a winery first. So we go in there and we drank a glass of wine each. Yeah, that was some good wine. It's been a couple beers later. God knows how many shots I took from that Douce bottle. And a glass of wine. And then we go to another bar. We take another shot, had another beer and we're ready to go. On to another bar where they actually have a DJ and you can dance at. Somehow, some way, this guy bought me, my coworker and her friend, and the two girls he was with, all shots. We got free shots, okay? And then my coworker bought us our second round of beer. Child, tell me why. Her coworker was only with us for an hour, threw up. <laughs> she threw up in the bathroom, yo. She threw up in the bathroom. She's not used to drinking, mixing her shit, especially drinking Douce, but she really could not handle it and she was ready to go home, so she left. After an hour of drinking. <laughs> Poor girl, I feel really bad because she was literally slurring. She was mumbling like she was out of it. I'm surprised I was still okay, it's crazy. So me and my coworker were dancing, we're not with each other, but just dancing, having a good motherfucking time. Everybody else there is having a good motherfucking time. All of a sudden a bouncer comes and is kicking my coworker out. He tells her, you gotta go. I look at the big man like, what you mean? I didn't see her do anything. Like we're having a good time. She's smiling and shit. I'm smiling and shit. I'm like, what you mean? What happened? He wouldn't tell me nothing. He just said, you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm like, what the fuck? What happened? What'd you do? And then he said, she spilled her drink on the DJ's equipment. Apparently my coworker was going like this with her beer bottle, like, girl, you, you're lucky we didn't get jumped for that shit because people don't like that. But I guess it just fell on the DJ equipment. That's a big no-no. So I'm like, damn. So I went up to the DJ and I asked the DJ, I'm like, I'm sorry for what happened, but can we please stay? It was an accident. He said, <laughs> I'm like, God damn. I said, all right, I guess. I went back to my coworker and I told her, girl, you gotta go, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm out. We just got there. I love to dance. This is just my coworker that I just met couple months before so it's like if it was my friend friend then I would ride with her but I was like I ain't ready to leave for for your fuck ups you know what I'm saying and she's a cool ass person but uh, uh I got her an uber okay I got her an uber to go back home she said no I'll pay I'll pay I'm like no girl it's fine it's not a big deal I already ordered it don't worry about it so she went home my ass goes back in the bar and I'm still drinking I'm sipping sipping on my last beer and dancing and socializing. Ooh child, Clarence made the tub look so comfortable, it's not. Anyways, so I was in the bar for another hour and now I'm ready to go, okay? I left the bar early, the bar closed at two. I left like at one. Okay, that's early for me. I usually stay to the end. I'm already getting fucked up because now everything's starting to hit me. But not in a way where it's like, oh my God, I feel dizzy. No, I didn't feel dizzy at all. Like I just knew that I was fucked up already that I can't drink anymore or I'll get worse. So it's time for me to go. Now this right here, I'm about to tell you, is things that I remember, cause I blacked out. I go to my Jeep, I open the door, and I just hear somebody on the sidewalk say, are you gonna drive? I ignored the bitch. <laughs> I ignored the bitch, cause let me tell you why. I don't know you, I don't know you, why are you speaking to me? And this, is, this would be me sober. Like bitch, don't ask me a question if you haven't even said hello to me. Like introduce yourself, child. Don't ask 
me a question and expect an answer. I don't know you, you as a stranger, stranger danger. I'm getting all the beer bottles out of my car. I threw everything out in the trash can. I go back in my car and I drive. Back at home, I know when I'm too fucked up to drive. I lived in the Chicago suburbs, so I'm literally 45 minutes from the city. I've always lived in the suburbs, but I've always partied in the city. Partying in the suburbs is trash. They don't play hip hop because they're scared shit's, shit's gonna go down. In the city, no one gives a fuck, especially in Chicago. So because that drive was so long, I knew when I was too fucked up to drive, that's when I would park somewhere safe and sleep in my car for a few hours until I know I'm ready to give it a shot and go home. Here, it was different. I knew it was too fucked up because I'm literally driving the car with two hands and I'm still not able to control the motherfucker. I'm driving and I was like, oh my God, why is this car still swerving? What the fuck? <laughs> I knew a time like that, I would have pulled over somewhere and slept. But realizing that I'm already halfway home, which means I'm five minutes away, all of a sudden the lights start flashing. Whoop, whoop. I look at the rear mirror. I was like, fuck. Then I said to myself, cause I'm drunk, cousin, I got you. I said cousin because my cousin passed away just like a month or two before. He died tragically and I feel like he was the one that got me caught the fuck up <laughs> in the spirit world. I think he's trying to save me from making worse decisions because I made a lot of bad decisions while I was drinking. I wasn't mourning his death health in a healthy way for sure. I'm just going to deal with the consequences because it's that time. After drinking and driving for 15 years, I was going to get caught eventually. So I'm gonna have to deal with the consequences. I pulled over. This is when I black out. I remember him coming to the car and me trying to get my insurance and registration. And then I remember being asked if I would like to blow in the breathalyzer. I was always taught to refuse, okay? Refuse it because you might be able to fight the case later. I did not know that if you refuse to blow in the breathalyzer in Arizona, that you are gonna automatically get a 12 month suspension on your license. So you'll be lucky if you can fight the case and prove that you weren't drunk. But if you can't, that's automatic 12 month suspension. I didn't know that shit. Child, that's some crazy shit, huh? Ooh, you burped. <laughs> You're not even drinking. So the next thing I remember was I said, no. I was so confident and cocky and shit. I was like, no, I'm not taking it, no. My dumb ass, they asked me to do the, um, the field sobriety test. I didn't know you could refuse that too. I wish I knew. This is their way of getting more evidence against you. And I didn't fucking know that shit. And child, I don't remember the field sobriety test. I don't remember that shit at all. I don't remember being in the cop car. But all of a sudden I'm sitting right there in the police department in a holding cell. <laughs> oh fuck. They told me they were, they were gonna get a warrant from the judge to take a blood, urine, and breathalyzer test. I'm still saying no to everything. And all of a sudden, because I still have my phone on me, I get a text from my coworker who's back at home. And let me tell y'all, this text was hilarious. It was funny as hell. I was just cracking up at the police station. I didn't even realize it was this late. It was already 4.45 in the morning. She asked me if I was okay. See where the fuck I'm at. I told her I was at the police station and blah, blah, blah. And she sent me this text. This girl says, if it makes you feel slightly better, my stupid ass came home and I don't even know what happened but I was half naked on the other side of the house. I was so confused and lost. Finally, the host came out and was like, what are you doing? I just remember I kept apologizing and went back to my room, but I honestly have no fucking idea how I even got lost on that side of the house because my purse and my shirt was already in my room. <laughs> this bitch, this bitch was half naked walking around the house, okay? This house is fully packed, okay? We are a total of seven roommates. Seven. And then you have the host by herself on the other side of the house. This girl ended up in her room, y'all. She don't know what the fuck she was looking for. <laughs> she was that fucked up. She said, honestly, don't remember if I was full naked or half naked, laughing my ass off. But I just remembered I was in my bra and can't remember if I had my pants off too. Lost as hell. <laughs> lost as hell bitch was lost yo maybe she was looking for the bathroom but the bathroom is literally once you get out of her room you take a left it's right there she ended up taking a right through the living room 
through the kitchen, through, through the dining room, and into this woman's room. Mind you, the host is old as fuck. She's probably in her fucking 80s. Imagine this bitch was fucking scared. <laughs> that night was eventful. <laughs> oh, hi. Nice to see you. Hold on, baby, I got you. Here, baby, it's your toy. You can have it. Excuse me. Gotta drink my, gotta drink my 40, you know what I'm saying? I love you so much. Oh, this is my best friend. I ended up getting um, a warrant from the judge, so I had no choice. They can legally force a blood test and a urine test. I don't know how they can force a urine test, but I don't know, somehow they can. And the breathalyzer. All these cops came in, there was like, because I kept saying no, no, no. <laughs> Literally, there was like 10 cops in the room all of a sudden, when there was only two. So 10 cops came in the room with a chair, a chair with straps on it. They were literally trying to intimidate me and let me know that they were gonna strap my ass on that chair if I don't fucking do what they say. Listen, if I knew the laws, I would fucking just do it. But I didn't want to be taken advantage of while I'm drunk and I want to make sure my rights are being violated. I didn't fucking know, but turns out, yeah. Once they get a warrant from the judge, you ain't got no choice. So I did all that. The alcohol limit for a DUI is a .08. I blew a .183. My ass was drunk, like fucked up. Like I shouldn't have been on the road fucked up. Like, like thank you cops for pulling me over because you saved my life and others type shit. Okay, so hey, it is what it is, man. I learned my lesson. Oh, I ain't done with my story. I just told you what I remembered. I had the police report of what actually happened when I got pulled over. I'm not gonna read through all these paragraphs, it's a long report. It was approximately 1.12 a.m. The cop was dispatched to the area of downtown Prescott in reference to a possible DUI driver. Dispatch advised the reporting party witnessed a female subject that was possibly intoxicated and turned to the driver's seat of her vehicle, which was a white Jeep with an, with an Illinois license plate. Dispatch described the female subject as white female with short brown hair wearing what appeared to be a green army jacket. Listen, basically a Karen, which I'm guessing was the person who asked me if I was gonna be driving, called the cops on me. I would have made it home okay, but because they called me in with my license plate, they were out in the streets looking for me. Thank you, Karen. You're the best. I love how you're in everyone's business. That's awesome. So this cop specifically found my Jeep and did a U-turn and drove up behind me. He witnessed me swerving within my lane and going up and down with my speed limit. Finally, he saw me cross over the line. That's what they were waiting for. They were waiting for me to fuck up so they can have a reason to pull me over, which they did. They pulled me over. So this cop, pulled me over and went to the driver's side and noticed that I matched the description of the possible DUI driver. I rolled down my window and he said that a strong odor of an intoxicating beverage came from the vehicle. And he noticed that I had slow, <laughs> slurred speech as well as red, red watery eyes. And I had a blank stare when he spoke to me. Which makes sense because that was a time where I blacked out. He asked for my driver's license and where I was coming from. And without speaking or answering his question, apparently I just gave him my license and he asked me again where I was coming from. I told him downtown. Now remember, I don't remember this conversation. <laughs> I told him downtown. So I was smart enough to sit, to not say a bar. He asked me if I consumed any alcohol and my dumbass said in a mumbled voice, Obviously. <laughs> Yo, where they do that at? My ass said, obviously. I didn't even give it a chance to lie. I just straight up, I can't lie guys. But then again, I understand why I gave up so easily and was just honest, it was because I was talking to my cousin in spirit form and, it, and telling him that I got you. Like, I know I'm gonna have to deal with this. Like, I get it. So I guess that's why I said it so quickly, obviously. And then he asked me if I can perform a sobriety test. I said yes. We did all the tests and apparently I failed all of it. <laughs> and that's when at 1.34 a.m. he decided to handcuff me <laughs> and take me to the police car. And my ass apparently is still mumbling, this is my first time. <laughs> the fuck? Bliss, where they do that at?
Like who be doing that shit? They read my Miranda rights and I don't remember that shit. So around 3.40 a.m. That's when I did, that's when they got the warrant and I did all my tests. Blood, urine, all that shit. Basically, I'm guilty. Okay, guilty. They asked me for a post interview and I refused and I said not until I get a lawyer. Arizona is the state with the harshest first time offense punishment for DUIs in the whole country. It's the only state with a five star rating. Not only that, it's also a no tolerance state where they even have a law called DUI with the slightest degree. Which means, while it's illegal to drive a vehicle with an alcohol consumption of, a, of over 0 0.08, in Arizona, any alcohol found in your system will be considered a DUI. If you drank a glass of wine and you're driving and they catch you and see that you had alcohol in your system, you're gonna get a DUI. <laughs> Out of all the states, that's where I fuck up at. That being said, I was charged with... I had to take a sip for this one. I was being charged with DUI with liquor. That's the first offense. Uh, the second offense is DUI liquor with 0 0.08 or more. And the third offense was DUI extreme, which is alcohol consumption between 0.15 to 0.19. And because I blew a 0.18, that's why I got charged with three offenses. I got a lawyer because they were about to fuck me. And if you haven't seen my last video, go and watch it. I'll give you more details on the process of being charged, convicted, and sentenced in Arizona for DUI. Yeah, I'm not going back to that state. No ma'am. So that was my story on how I got my DUI. Mind you, I had a clean record for 37 years up to this point. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, anyways guys, like, comment, share, subscribe, and look out for another story time. Peace.